Hello everyone, in this video we would be talking about Tileworks estimation. So for tiles, we actually have so plenty of um, types of tiles which include the following but are not limited to. So we have our granite tiles, marble tiles, limestone tiles, ceramic tiles, porcelain tiles, and etc. So in this video, we wouldn't be talking about the definition of each of these tiles right here. Rather, we would be talking about the method on how we would be estimating the material quantities of such tiles. So once again, ang focus natin sa video na to is yung estimation lang. So for us to estimate the quantities that we will be needing for tileworks, this would be the common method. So we can estimate it by area method or we can estimate it by direct count method. And so for our area method, the idea behind here is that, so for pretend that we would be covering an area of, let's say, 10 square meters. So this would just be an example. So for example, that we want this area to be covered by our tiles, we would now be determining how many tiles we need for us to cover this amount of area. So what we would be doing now is that we would be getting the area of one tile. So let's say that we would be using 300 mm by 300 mm tiles. So 300 by 300 is equal to 0 0.3 by 0 0.3 meters respectively and if we are to multiply this so 0.3 by 0.3 that is equal to 0 0.09 so meaning for every tile that we have it would cover 0 0.09 square meters of an area so in estimation by area method we would be counting how much tiles do we need for this by using this factor right here so for us to determine how many 0 0.09 square meters are there in 10 square meters, we would just be dividing it. So for the number of tiles, that is equal to 10 square meters divided by 0 0.09 square meters per piece. So dividing such, we would be having an answer of, so 10 divided by 0 0.09, that is equal to, 111.11 so 111.11 but since we cannot buy a fractional part of a tile we would be rounding it up to 112 so we approximately need 112 pieces of tiles to cover this amount of area so that is if we wouldn't be considering other factors such as breakage so kung gusto nyo sakto lang 112 pieces so meron ka lang maliit na allowance which is 0.89 ng isang piraso. So that is for area method. So for direct count method, this is quite self-explanatory. Bibilangin mo lang ng, ng diretsahan. No? So for example, you have this one right here. What you would be doing is count your tiles. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and whatsoever. And another method using direct count method is that you would be counting them per layer. So if you have these tiles right here which is not square, it is better for you to use direct count method. So, in order to use direct count method that way, bibilangin mo lang kung ilan yung tiles per layer. So, for example, this would be one layer right here. You would be counting it one, two, let's say you have three here. And you will be multiplying it by the number of layers. So, for example, in this side right here, you would be counting this. So, one, two, three, four, and multiply it by the number of layers so that is for direct count so for direct count method this would be um, much accurate than that of area method but it would be more type consuming as compared with area method and for area method it is advisable for you to use area method if your tiles are in this pattern right here yung kapag basic lang siya and not like this so if it would be like this but once again, your direct count method would be more accurate than that of your area method, but your area method would be uh, much easier than that of your direct count method. So if you want accuracy over time, use direct count method, but if time is of the essence and you care less about the accuracy over the time that you would be computing, better use area method. Okay. Aside from the tiles itself, your other items that you would need to estimate here in Tileworks would include the following. So for the bond between your rough surface, which is, well, 
this surface right here and your tiles you would be needing your adhesive or for the bond and for your adhesive you can either use your mortar or your tile adhesive so your mortar consists of cement let's say portland cement sand and water so if you already have watched uh, the previous pre-recorded lecture about masonry units you already know about these factors right here so if you would be using your class b mortar your uh, cement to sand ratio would be one is to three and these factors right here would be needed for your estimation so these factors right here came from the book of max fardo so what this implies is that for every cubic meter of mortar that you will be needing you approximately need 12 bags of portland cement and one cubic meter of sand that is if you are to use class b but if you are to use class a mortar you would be using this factor right here but the default class for mortar is to be class b so by default you would be using this factors right here so that is for mortar so the advantage of mortar over tile adhesive is that your leveling would be much more let's say flexible so as you can see here your mortar application is to be thicker than that of your tile adhesive. So with that being said, you can now level your tiles easily. Kasi kapag tile adhesive yung gagamitin mo, medyo onti lang yung iyong allowance para ma-level lang iyong mga tiles. So kapag mas makapal, syempre mas meron kang uh, freedom para ibahin ng inyong leveling. So that is for your mortar. So for tile adhesive, this would be the mixture of your tile adhesive and water. And the factor that you would be using here depends on what brand that you will be using. So for example, you would be using this tile adhesive right here, which is quite famous here in the Philippines. So guys, this is not a sponsored video. I just, I mean, this is what I saw on the internet and this is what we have been using in our sites. So for example, that you would be using um, this application thickness right here. So what this means is that, for example, this thickness right here is to be 6 mm. I mean, the thickness of your adhesive is to be 6 mm. You would be using this factor right here. So what that implies is that for every 25 kilograms of your um, tile adhesive, which is this or one bag, it would approximately cover 2.6 square meters and if you would be um, applying a thickness of 10 mm it would cover an approximate area of 1.6 square meters and for your abc tile adhesive they can be bought in 5 kilogram plastic bag or in 25 kilogram multi-layer paper bag which you can see here so which is one sack so that is if you are to use abc um, tile adhesive so for your tile adhesive, factors vary per brand. So once again, these factors right here are only used for ABC. So it is imperative for you as estimators to include the brand that you would be using. So if you would be using other brands, it is better for you to include the brand name in your bill of quantities. So that is for tile adhesive and your mortar. And another thing that you would be needing to compute is the tile grout. So as you can see here, this would be the tile grout right here. So it would be this, this, and this. So the use of your tile grouts are to fill in these voids right here. So it is to use to fill in the voids right there para naman hindi pasukin ng domain ng alikabok and for you to have a much more um, presentable area or a presentable walls or let's say your flooring. So there and for you to compute your tile grout, similarly with your tile adhesive, they differ per brand. So for example, that we would be using this um, brand right here. It is said in their website that its coverage area would be approximately 1.5 to 4 square meters if you would be having a 6 mm width. So by 6 mm width, this width right here. So if I am to zoom in this um, area, so let's say that I would be zooming in here. So this thickness right here is to be 6 mm. So you can use 
this factor right here. And if the thickness of the um, if the thickness of your tiles is to be 3 mm. So there and so though it is said here that its coverage area would be at a range of 1.5 to 4 square meters and even though that 1.5 square meters is a more conservative value for your factor, I can safely say by experience that 4 square meters is enough for this kind of specification. So as per experience yan, so depende yan sa experience nyo or sa kung paano naman gamitin ng inyong mga construction worker ang inyong tile grout. So packaging for tile grouts are in, in 2 kilograms per bag and I think I saw before a bag that weighs about 1.8 kilograms. So ayan. But what if that the coverage area for your tiles, your width would be different or let's say that the thickness of the tiles would be different or let's say that you are not sure on which factor right here you would be using. If you are doubtful of these factors right here, you can actually solve for them manually using this equation right here where L is equal to the length of the tile, B is equal to the breadth of the tile, W is to be the width of the joint, and D is to be the thickness of the tile. So there, for example, that your tiles would be as follow. So for example, that it would be a square tile. And the dimension of the tile is, let's say, 300 by 300. And it has a thickness of, let's say, um, 8 mm. Let's see. And the width of the joint, so this joints right here. So let's say that the width of the joint would be 6 mm also. So... W is equal to 6 mm. So using this equation right here, um, substituting known values, so looking at the calculator to your left, so that is to be L plus B, and L plus B respectively is equal to 300 plus 300. So closing parentheses, times width, so the, the width of the joint is equal to 6, the thickness of the tile is to be uh, 8, times 1.8 divided by your length times base or length times breadth so that is to be 300 times 300 so our answer here is equal to 0 0.576 so meaning the approximate coverage for this amount of setup is equal to 0 0.576 0 0.576 kilograms of tile grout per square meter of your area. Then for us to determine how, how many bags do we need for this amount of, I mean for this factor right here. So it is said here that one bag weighs about 2 kilograms of tile grout. So if one bag weighs about 2 kilograms, so 2 kilograms, and if we are to divide this by this factor right here, which is 0 0.576 kilograms per square meter. Oh, by the way, this is kilograms per bag. So dividing such, that is to be um, 2 divided by 0.576, that is to be 3.472. So 3.472 square meters per bag. So this would be the more accurate coverage area for one bag of your tile grout. So it falls here as well so it is three point something okay so other things that you should consider so shout out to sir engineer ken kaban league for this figure and this would be some of the miscellaneous i mean some of the items that you might want to estimate for your tile work so it would be the following so you would be having this internal corner capping bead right here your internal bead your internal elephant's foot, your corner bead, I mean internal corner bead, your external corner capping bead, your capping, your runner, and whatsoever. And aside from this capping right here, you can also use tile trim. So tile trim. And they are bought per piece and the commercial length of such, of all of this, um, all of these items right here differ upon the brand. But for your internal beads, your capping, your external beads, all of these have a commercial um, length of 4 inches or 0 0.1 meters. So that is for 
uh, your items right here that would be estimated by length and as for these ones right here they are just sold per piece so they wouldn't be having a effective length or such and for your tile trim if i'm not mistaken they can be bought in 10 feet or sometimes in uh, 12 feet so these items right here would depend upon the setup of your project so let's have an example instead so in this problem estimate the materials needed for tile works for the following data so for our flooring the total area for the flooring is to be 9 square meters and we would be using 350 by 350 by 8 mm tiles and we would be using Portland cement as our bond between the tiles and your concrete. Then for number two, for your wall tiles, it would approximately be equal to 24 square meters and we would be using 100 mm by 100 mm by 6 millimeters tiles and we would be using tile adhesive. And since the brand of the tile adhesive is not specified, since the only data I have is to be this tile adhesive right here, so I would be using this instead. Okay, so there, let's start. So for number one, so I, I would just be writing it here. So for flooring tiles. So our area is to be nine square meters. So for the number of tiles, this is equal to 9 square meters and divided by the area of one tile. So divided by 0 0.35 by 0 0.35. So meters and this is to be per piece. Getting the number of pieces here, that is to be 9 divided by 0 0.35 divided by 0 0.35 and that is to be equal to 73.46 so 73 I mean 0.47 so that is to be 73.47 pieces but it is better for us to increase this value right here by 5% for breakage since if magpapadeliver kayo some tiles would be cracked or would be uh, broken so let's increase it by 5% just for a factor of safety so times 1.05 so once again this 1.05 right here is your 5% increase for breakage so equal to so multiplying this by 1.05 this is to be equal to 77.14 so 77.14 and since we cannot buy 0.14 of a tile, so since we cannot buy a fractional part of a tile, we would now be rounding this up to 78 pieces of 350 by 350 mm tiles. So this is to be your answer for your for number one. We would be summarizing that later. And for the other materials, so it is said there that we would be using mortar right here. So use portant cement mortar for our mortar. And since it is not said which class of mortar we would be using, by default, we would be using class B tiles. So which is this one right here. So I would just be copying this. So this one. Then for our mortar, if we don't have the specified thickness of our mortar, it is better for us to assume that this thickness right here, or the thickness of our mortar equal to 1 inch or 25 mm. So there, let's assume that our thickness would be 25 mm. So thickness is equal to 25 mm. And it is said here that the total area would be 9 square meters. So multiplying 9 square meters with our thickness would give us the volume of our mortar that we would need. Volume is equal to the area which is 9 square meters times the thickness which is 25 mm. But 25 mm in meters is equal to 0 0.025 meters. So multiplying we would arrive at an answer of... 0.225 so 0 0.225 
cubic meters. So for our mortar, we would be estimating the quantity of cement bags and the quantity of sand. So for our cement bag, so for the number of cement that is equal to our volume of 0 0.225 cubic meters times this factor right here. Oops, I'm sorry. This factor right here, since our default class is to be class B. So ito yung default. Times 12 bags for every cubic meter of cement. So this would cancel out. And our answer here would now be, so times 12, so our answer here would be 2.7 bags. So 2.7 bags. And we cannot buy a fractional part of a cement, so we would now be rounding it up to 3 bags of, let's say, Portland cement. So Portland cement. So there. And for your sand, so for the number of, I mean, for your vol, for the volume of sand, that is equal to 0 0.225 cubic meters. So for our factor for our sand, that is just one. So meaning for every cubic meter of your mortar, there is also one cubic meter of sand. So this is to be your answer already. So this volume right here is to be your fine sand. But for example that what you would be ordering is to be river sand and in your river sand, so your river sand is actually the combination of both your fine sand and a little bit of coarse aggregates which is gravel so this is for your river sand and river sand is the most commercially available uh, sand that you you can buy in your in hardwares but if you can buy fine sand so this is enough but if you would be uh, buying river sand it is better for you to increase this volume right here by 33 percent so if you can remember in the last pre-recorded lecture about masonry units we increased our volume by 33 percent to account the presence of gravel in the river sand that you would be buying. So our answer here would be so 0.225 times 1.33. Our answer here would be 0 0.3. So 0 0.3 cubic meters. So this is if you would be buying river sand. So there, and if possible, it is better for you to buy fine sand instead. So there, and moving forward, so what else do we need to compute? So we already have computed for our tiles, for our mortar, and what about for our tile grout? So for tile grout, so you can either use these factors right here but in this case right here so for pretend that we don't know what factor we would be using let's just use this formula instead so here and it is said in the problem that the dimensions of our tiles would be as follows so 350 by 350 by 8 mm and for the width of the joint so let's just assume that w is equal to 6 mm so this is by default but if stated otherwise then use the width of the joint that is indicated so using these values right here that would be so approximate coverage is equal to l plus b so that is to be 350 plus 350 times w which is this one right here so times 6 times 8 so this is to be the thickness of the tile times 1.8 if we are to divide this by length times the breadth which is 350 and 350 respectively so uh, solving for this using al our calculator so our factor i mean the factor that we would be using right now is to be 0 0.494 kilograms per square meter 
So using this factor right here, let's just multiply that by our area of 9 square meters. So weight of grout. This is to be equal to 9 square meters times our factor of 0 0.494 kilograms per square meter. So this would cancel out and our answer here would now be equal to so 9 times 0.494 so our answer is to be 4.44 or let's say 4.45 kilograms but take note guys that in buying your tile grout they are in they are bought in 2 kilograms per bag so for us to know the number of bags, so let's divide this by our factor of 2 kilograms per bag. And our answer here would now be equal to, so by the way, kilograms would cancel out. So that this is to be 4.45 divided by 2. Our answer here would be 2.225. So we would be rounding it up to 3. So 2.225. And we would be rounding it up to 3 bags. So this is for our tile grout. So for our summary, for work number 1, so for flooring. So for the volume of the sand, so you can either use 0 0.225 cubic meters of fine sand. Or, if you are to buy river sand, you would be buying 0 0.3, which is this one right here. So, or 0 0.3 cubic meters of river sand. And for your tile grout, we would be needing 3 bags. So, that is for our flooring. But what about for number 2? So I will just be copying this to the next slide. So this is for number 2. So for our wall tiles, the number of wall tiles that we need, so n tiles, is equal to, so the area which is 24 square meters divided by the area of one tile. So divided by 0 0.1 by 0 0.1. And this is to be equal to 24 divided by 0 0.1 divided by 0 0.1, 2,400 pieces. But if we are to increase this by 5%, for its allowance for breakage, so times 1.05, this is to be equal to, so times 1.05, so we would be having a, a total of 2,520 pieces. So this is to be the number of tiles that you need if this is to be the tiles that you would be needing. So mas maliliit yung ating tiles no as compared with a while ago. And we are to use tile adhesive here. And since once again, the data that is available right now for me is this data right here. So if I am to apply a thickness of 6mm in those tiles, I would be using this factor right here which is 2.6 square meters per 25 kilograms bag so for the n bags of your tile adhesive this is to be equal to so 24 square meters which is your area divided by your factor and i forgot my factor my factor is to be 2.6 so this one right here once again so 2.6 2.6 square meters per bag or per 25 kilograms but I want my unit to be in bag directly so our answer here would now be equal to so 24 divided by 2.6 so I would be needing 9.23 bags and since we cannot buy 0 0.23 bags so you can either buy I mean, you can either have a con combination of both um, your 5 kilograms and 25 kilogram bags respectively. But for the ease of computation for us right now, let's just use 25 kilogram bags. So this would be rounded up to 10 bags.
a b c tile adhesive so that is for our tile adhesive and for our tile grout so tile grout this is to be so let's let's solve for our factor first so using this equation right here i would just be copying it here for you to know where my i mean where my solution is coming from so i would temporarily pl place it here first for us to have space so our length is to be 100 mm thickness would be 6 mm and let's assume right now that our width is also 6 mm so using that approximate coverage area that is to be l plus b so 100 plus 100 so by the way i would just be placing it here first so that you can see it very clearly so times w and our w is 6 mm and our d is also 6 mm times 1.8 divided by 100 times 100 so this w right here the width of your joints depends upon the installation of your tile so yun depende sa inyo and depende sa inyong uh, tile setter so getting your answer here our answer here would be equal to 1.296 1.296 kilograms per square meters so 1.296 and we would be multiplying this by our total area which is 24 so for our tile grout that is to be um, 24 square meters times 1.296 kilograms per square meter and getting the, our answer here that is to be so times 24 our answer here would be 31.1 so 31.104 kilograms and since once again our tile grout is sold in 2 kilogram pack so let's divide this by 2 kilograms per bag so our answer here would now be equal to so divided by 2 our answer here would be 16 bags so here so i would just be deleting this so that is for our answer so for our wall tiles so number two it would be as follows this would be the summary of the quantities that we would be needing for this work right here so once again, if you would be needing these items right here, you can estimate them by direct count. So that's it for this pre-recorded lecture. So thank you.